In this vid video, um, I'll teach you how to solve separable first-order differential equations. A separable first-order equation typically can be written in this form, uh, which you can integrate uh, dx and then uh, do a uh, substitution. And that is equivalent to uh, solving this equation, treating dy dx like a fraction which means writing this equation as g of y dy equals f of x dx and then integrating. So we integrate from the initial condition x naught to x and then we integrate from y of x naught which is y naught to the value of y at x is what we call y. So a separable equation then gets uh, separated and then immediately integrated. Okay. So the way to see how it works is to do a, a quick example. So we have uh, as an example dy dx equals some relatively complicated right hand side 2 cosine 2x divided by 3 plus 2y with an initial condition y of 0 equals minus 1. So suppose that some, for some reason some physical problem gives you a, a differential equation that looks like this. So uh, this equation is separable Separable means now that treating dy dx as a fraction, we can write this as a function of y times dy equals a function of x times dx. Here it's very easy to do just by cross multiplying. So we have 3 plus 2y dy equals 2 times cosine 2x dx. Okay. This is the separation stage. So we've shown that the equation is uh, separable by able to write a function of y times dy equals a function of x times dx. Then we can integrate. x goes from starting from 0. So we can integrate from 0 to x and then y at x equals 0 is minus 1. y at x is what we call y. Okay, so the differential equation is integrated. We may or may not be able to do this integral. In this case we can. When you can do the integral then you can usually find an analytical solution for y as a function of x. Not always but usually. So if we go ahead and we integrate uh, the left hand side is a polynomial, very easy to integrate. 3y plus 2y squared over 2 is y squared. We'll put in the limits, minus 1 to y. We integrate 2 cosine 2x. Uh, you can do that by substitution or you can just recognize that the derivative of sine 2x is 2 times cosine 2x. So the right hand side is sine 2x and that goes from 0 to x. <coughs> Therefore we have a 3y plus y squared from the upper limit minus minus 3 plus 3 minus minus 1 squared minus 1 equals sine 2x minus sine 0, sine 0 is 0, and we end up then with an algebraic equation for y. We recognize this equation as a quadratic equation for y, um, where the constant term is a function of x, so we write that as a quadratic equation, y squared plus 3y plus 2 minus sine 2x, that's the constant term, constant with respect to y, equals 0. Now, 
we resort to solving a quadratic equation. So the solution, the goal is to find y equals y of x explicitly. We solve the quadratic equation using the quadratic formula. So there's two solutions now, which seems to be a problem that we'll need to solve. We cannot neglect, arbitrarily neglect any solution. So the two solutions are negative b, negative 3, plus or minus the square root of b squared, 3 squared, 9, minus 4a is 1, c is 2 minus sine 2x, over 2a, which is 2. And then uh, it always pays to simplify these things. Minus 3 halves plus or minus 1 half. And then we have in the integrand, we have a 9 minus 8, which is 1. And then a minus 4 times a minus sine 2x is a plus 4 sine 2x. Okay. So that's the solution to the uh, differential equation. But we end up with two solutions. Why do we have two solutions? We have end up with a quadratic equation, which has two roots. It turns out that there are two initial conditions. There's another initial condition between y, besides y of 0 equals minus 1 which we'll see is y is 0 equals minus 2, that will result in the same quadratic equation. So in order to determine which is our solution, where y of 0 equals minus 1, we have to look to see which of these roots satisfies the initial condition. So we do that, y plus or minus of 0, writing the plus 1 on top, is minus 3 halves plus 1 half times square root of 1, sine 0 is 0. So minus 3 halves plus 1 half is minus 1. The minus root is minus 3 halves minus 1 half is minus 2. Okay. Our initial condition is y of 0 equals minus 1 which means that the plus satisfies, the minus doesn't. So if we had y of 0 equals minus 2, you can show that that initial condition results in exactly the same quadratic equation, okay? Because a uh, property that a quadratic uh, equation has two roots, and only two roots. So we didn't have the solution, so we write the solution. So therefore, y of x is the plus root, so it's minus 3 halves plus 1 half root 1 plus 4 sine 2x. And that's the solution. Now, it turns out that this solution is rather, has a rather odd property. Right. When we start at x equals 0, sine of 0 is 0, so the integrand is 1. Then as x increases from 0, the sine increases until eventually the sine becomes 1, and we get a square root of 5. Then the sine will decrease back to 0, and then the sine will become negative. So at some point, 4 sine 2x can become negative 1 when sine 2x is negative a quarter. The square root vanishes, uh, after which the square root becomes a square root of a negative number. And at that point, the solution ceases. What's happening is as the square root vanishes, y becomes minus 3 halves. When y is minus 3 halves, the denominator goes to 0, so dy dx goes to infinity. So the slope of the tangent line to the curve 
becomes infinite when the square root becomes uh, turns to zero, becoming negative, and then the solution no longer exists. That's a possible property of a differential equation.